Ready, what's going on? How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, this is uh, my first time in Reading, and uh, to be honest, it's probably going to be my fucking last time here, okay? This is, <laughs> this is the creepiest fucking place I have ever been to in my life. Yo, okay, it's Thanksgiving weekend, not only that I hit a shitload of traffic, right? But your highways are just fucking black. There's no street lights or anything, it's just fucking roads. If my one headlight was out, I wouldn't be able to see anything. It was so fucking creepy. I swear to God, I was driving on the highway, and there was a billboard. I'm, I'm not even kidding you. There was a billboard. It said, are you going to heaven, or are you going to hell? 1-800-WHAT'S-TRUE. <laughs> what the fuck am I getting myself into? Jesus Christ. I didn't think this was going to be a show tonight. I thought it was going to be like a fucking seance or something. Oh my god. Reading is crazy, man. <laughs> it's a packed room tonight. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're going to have some fun tonight. Uh, this is a, a weird way to start a comedy show off with this question, but uh, did you ever go to the bathroom, take a look at your own shit, and think to yourself, I'm not going to live long? <laughs> I have a IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, but it should be changed to irregular bizarre shits. Uh, I just think it set it off, you know, I could be fine one day, and then I eat or drink something, next thing you know, I'm sitting on the toilet for an hour. After I'm done, I just get up, I look in the toilet, shake my head with disgust, and then I look in the mirror, I'm like, that's right, you survived Elvis Presley, you're not going out like no wuss, and then I go on with my day. Speaking of shit, guys, have you been watching the news lately? There's so much bad stuff going on in the world nowadays. Fucking ISIS bomb in Paris, that's so fucked up. Charlie Sheen got HIV. Let's be honest, Charlie Sheen didn't get HIV. HIV got Charlie Sheen, because that guy's a goddamn saint. But are we really, like, surprised about this? This dude fucks anything with a pulse, and he goes on, like, two-week-long alcohol and drug binges. <laughs> But he's been warning us for years though. He's like, yo man, tiger blood. I got tiger blood inside of me. <laughs> HIV, not fucking tiger blood. We know what you're doing. That's ridiculous, man. I, uh, do you guys uh, remember the Ferguson uh, riot that went on in Baltimore? You guys remember that shit? That was so messed up. They ruined a CVS. That was their only CVS which is really messed up. That's like me being in shitty Reading and uh, like destroying the Turkey Hill that that was the only source of food that I had here. Uh, it just makes no sense at all. <laughs> and then with further investigation, it showed that the people that messed up that CBS, they were writing workers. <laughs> if you see the videos, they had like the blue vest on and the name tags that said Jeff, they're running out like, ah, fuck these guys, they're coming to my place tomorrow. <laughs> LA is in a rut right now. They're losing a lot of trees and water, which is horrible for the economy. Uh, they're losing a lot of trees, and with further investigation, it showed they're losing the trees because uh, Snoop Dogg smoked them all. Uh, that's why they're losing it. And he's using the water for his bombs and for his cotton mouth. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> Another thing, uh, did you guys hear about the Lamar Odom uh, big scandal that was going on a couple months ago? You guys hear about that shit? For those who don't know, Lamar Odom is a seven foot black NBA superstar and he went to a bunny ranch in Vegas. This dude spent $75,000 on prostitutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if that was the best sex of my life, I don't think I would ever spend $75,000 on a prostitute. So this dude goes in there, right? And he overdoses on cocaine and natural male enhancements. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I've been around a lot of people that do drugs, and that is by far the weirdest combination of drugs I've ever seen in my life. Cocaine and <laughs> natural male enhancements. This dude's a seven-foot basketball player. He's, all, he's athletic and he works out all the time. I don't know why he would have any problems down in that soon. Uh, but it's, a <laughs> it's crazy, though. Uh, when the doctors got a call, there was a prostitute there, and uh, she took a picture of him butt-ass naked in the bathroom for evidence. When the cops walked in, this is what they saw. <laughs> Can you 
imagine if you were a rookie cop and that was your first fucking call? <laughs> a seven foot NBA player butt ass naked OD'd on like <laughs> natural male enhancements and cocaine? This is the weirdest shit I ever heard. I heard they had to use their jaws of life to get that shit out of there. <laughs> Man, it, he did survive though. He's, he's in good hands. Uh, which is good, because if he died, nobody would fuck Khloe Kardashian. Uh, <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner would get more dick than her. Uh, my only regret is that it wasn't one of the Kardashians, because who the fuck leaves those sluts in the life anymore? <laughs> Speaking of Caitlyn Jenner, uh, she just won the Female of the Year Award a couple weeks ago in New York. Did you guys hear this? It's a Female of the Year Award. Uh, there's three things wrong with that. One, she hasn't even been a female for a full year. Two, fuck you, America. And three, that just proves that men are better than women at everything, including being a woman. <laughs> God. That's so horrible, man. But it's America, man. You can grow up and you can be whatever you want. You know what I love growing up? The American dream. Where you can grow up to be whatever you want. Our parents tell us this as kids, so maybe it'll inspire us to be a doctor or the president. So my parents told me this as a kid, like, Chris, Chris, you could be whatever you want in this world. Don't let anybody tell you different. Hey, look at my eyes, Angel. You could be whatever you want. So my parents told me this as a kid, I was like, cool, I want to be a superhero. Not knowing that they just tell us this to make us study harder. So my friends were busy studying, I was busy trying to get spiders to bite me. Uh, like Spider-Man. It's true, I'm banned from every pen smart. <laughs> I thought I could like, climb up walls and shoot webs out of my hand and shit. <laughs> I even went as far as trying to convince my parents to leave through the back doors of theaters, like Bruce Wayne did in Batman. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Not that we had Batman money anyway. I would have been the Dark Knight in a completely non-bulletproof wetsuit riding around Philly in the 93 Honda Civic with my pug jingles as my sidekick. <laughs> so, I decided to uh, give up on being a superhero. But then, recently, I saw an ad in the paper for laser eye surgery. And I thought to myself, I would love to shoot lasers out of my eyes! The pursuit to be a superhero is back on! But... It just turned out to be a total scam. I knew something was fishy though, because when I went in for the conference before the surgery, uh, in my superhero costume, which was a, a blanket wrapped around my neck as a cape and my underwear outside of my pants, uh, he was laughing at me the entire time, which I thought was the most unprofessional shit I've ever seen. But he went on with the surgery anyway, and then he charged me thousands of dollars basically just steal my glasses away from me. He can't even see through walls, it's bullshit. I grew up uh, playing video games, and video games just got so realistic nowadays, that's just how I thought real life worked. You guys remember video games growing up? Like, you guys remember Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. Yeah, if you don't remember Super Mario Brothers, you lived under a rock as a kid. <laughs> to me, Super Mario Brothers was like the greatest game ever growing up. And then seeing it from an older perspective, Super Mario Brothers is a game about two plumbers who do no plumbing whatsoever. In fact, as far as I can remember, they take shrooms until they think they're in medieval times with castles and princesses. Sometimes they think they can fly and then they beat up random strangers. I bet you in real life, Toad was just a rigid drug dealer. Princess Peach is just a town whore that gets around. And Bowser is just a fat old guy that gets mad when the bros are tripping in his yard. <laughs> I'll tell you though, the most, uh, the most realistic game though nowadays is uh, Grand Theft Auto. And that's because when I was driving up to the show tonight, a dude opened up my door, punched me in the face, threw me on the ground, and drove away in my 93 Honda Civic. So I'm gonna need a ride home if anybody can help me out with that. <laughs> Man, fucking great. You guys having a good time tonight or what? This is just a pre-show. Preston's going to come up here and do God knows what the fuck that dude's going to do. <laughs> you guys drinking tonight? Anybody drinking? Getting some drinks in you? It is 21 and older. This dude knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, man. I love partying. I love partying with girls, though, man. Any, uh, any girls in here partying tonight? Oh, oh, I see them over there. She's like, mm-mm. This is water. I'm on a 13-week challenge, and uh, I need to stay in shape, okay? Summer's only 45 days away from here. <laughs> no, but uh, I love partying, though, but uh, 
I gotta slow down on my partying because I used to do a lot of dumb shit when I partied. Uh, the one thing I used to do was last, uh, last year on my birthday, I got kicked out of the club. That was really fucking embarrassing. I got kicked out of the club for making it rain. Apparently, that doesn't mean pissing on the strippers. So I got, I got kicked out of the club for that one. It was really, it was really bad. And then around my way, uh, they have this thing called the Aaron Express. And uh, it's on St. Patty's Day, and it's just a, a day-long, like, booze cruise thing. Like, they have designated driver buses, and they drive you all around my town. And you start drinking, like, 10 o'clock in the morning till, basically, until you die. Uh, <laughs> I did this shit when I was 21 years old. I was like, this is going to be the greatest day of my life. I'm going to drink at, like, 10 o'clock. I'm going to be so fucked up. I'm going to get bitches. I was so fucked up by 7 o'clock at night. I thought it was 7 a.m., and I took a cab home. <laughs> I went home and I passed out of my bed. My dad comes in, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, tired. Like, oh, it's, it's tired, you know, it's late. He's like, wait, it's 7 o'clock at night. You don't go to bed before 2 in the morning. What the fuck's the matter with you? I'm like, oh, it's just tired. And I went back to sleep. He just looks at my mom, he's like, he's fucked up, man. And then he shuts the door on me. The reason I was asking about uh, girls, though, if they were drinking tonight, because I love partying with girls. Because there's so many different types of drunk girls out there. Guys, there's only two types of drunk dudes. The one dude, he gets drink he drinks a lot, and then he gets like beer muscles, and he wants to fight everybody. And then you have to do that part, he goes hard for like two hours, he pukes and goes to sleep, that's it. That's it. Two things. But girls, there's just so many different types of drunk girls out there. The notorious one is the shop girl. She's really aggressive, like she wants to fight you. I'll be at a bar and I'll go up to a girl like, hey, can I buy you a beer shot? You want a beer? It's like, what? You don't think I can take shots? Let's fucking take shots. I'll take shots right now, bitch. I was like, two, uh, two shots of fireball, please. <laughs> and then uh, the next girl is the emotional rep girl. This is a girl, uh, she just got out of a relationship, you know. It's her rebuilding stage. You know, like the Phillies been doing for the past 10 years. And uh, <laughs> so this is a rebuilding stage. She just broke up with Craig. You know, she's starting her own self right now. So we're like, oh, are you still with Craig? She's like, I'm not with Craig. I'm doing me right now, boo boo. This is my year. This is the year of me. This is the year of Tina. Woo, let's do it. You're like, all right, cool. And then she's fine the entire night until she gets drunk. And then every bad thing that ever happened in her life comes out. She starts talking about like her daddy issues. And then she's like texting me like, who the fuck are you texting? She's like, it's Greg! <laughs> it's with some fucking whore right now, but we belong together. We're gonna get married and have a house with fucking horses. It's gonna be great. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> the next girl is, uh, this is my favorite. Uh, this is a song girl. She doesn't even go out to get drunk. She just stands in the corner with the one crayon vodka and I say, ooh, ooh. Yeah, ooh, this is my song, this is my song, ooh, yeah, to every fucking song. I'm like, really? Who let the dogs out is your favorite song? <laughs> the next girl is, uh, <laughs> this is the newly single girl. This is the girl that just wants Dean to get blown off of her, you know, she's going to flirt with everybody to get in front of the bar line, she's going to get as many free drinks as she wants, she's going to be dancing with me one minute, like, mm, 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 ooh, yeah, I'm going to get it tonight, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Then like two minutes later, she's dancing with somebody else. I'm like, I thought, I thought we had something here. Uh, and this is the girl that's gonna leave the dude on all night and she's not gonna do shit with them. She's not gonna do shit with them because she wants him to feel the pain that she felt from those douchebags at her. <laughs> but I gotta slow down on my drinking though because uh, I have anxiety and panic disorder. Anybody have like any anxiety or anything in here? A little, okay, a little bit over here is probably Probably the drinking and probably from living in Reading. I have anxiety too. I had like three panic attacks on the fucking way here. <laughs> what was that? Oh, good, good for you, do you, man? Got out the fucking Malvern. You know what he's doing. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. <laughs> but uh, sometimes when I'm hungover, though, I get uh, really bad anxiety attacks. So I gotta slow down on my drinking. Uh, but I deal with that with music. I love rap music, just because there's so many different types of rappers out there. Uh, <laughs> you sound like the gangster rapper who still exists in like 2015. Uh, and then you have the fast spinner, they say like 50 things in two seconds, you're like, yeah. 
I woke up in the morning, took a piss, took a shower, went to work for a couple hours, came home, now it's my day. And then you have, uh, you have Drake. Uh, he can either pump you up or like maybe sad, I don't know which. Have you ever heard a Drake song? He goes so uh, like hard to solve so quickly. You like play a song a sad instrumental plays, he's like, yeah. Yeah. I like to cry in the rain so nobody can see my tears. Girl, you broke my heart so bad, it hasn't been fixed in years. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, Drake? Right? <laughs> the one thing I love about rap music, though, is when rappers make gun sound to sound nothing like an actual gun. Have you ever heard these dudes? They'd be so pumped up in the song. They'd be like, my gun go poo 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 poo. My gun go coo 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 coo. My gun go grrr, grrr. My gun go coo coo. My gun go, yeah, that's a squirt gun, motherfucker. <laughs> right in, thank you guys so much. You've been a fucking awesome crowd, thank you. My name is Christy. My album is officially on iTunes right now. It's called Birth of a Professional Moron. I'm selling t-shirts and CDs back there. If you like my set, come over and say what's up. Or buy me free drinks, because I'm broke. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, this next guy coming up though, he's he's super funny. This is the feature for the uh, the Fat Chance tour that uh, Preston led us on here. Uh, this dude has toured with Steve-O, Tom Green, and Bam Margera, and he's also works his trips in Las Vegas. So you know how this dude's going to get down. Everybody, give it up for the very funny Tom. Go! Oh! 